this is an, a creature older than the dinosaurs. The, the display or the, the, the one that I've, try, I've made to kind of give you a glimpse. The reason I say these octopuses are almost like aliens is because they have no DNA that is related really to any other animal. And I find that really interesting, but they are from this earth. People like to say they're aliens. They are from this earth because they still share a unique trait that's uh, pre uh, prevalent in all earth creatures. So we're gonna get started by making, again, some balls. And we're gonna make eight of these small, about marble sized balls. Our mine are about marble sized. So you can get started by making eight marble sized balls. Yeah, so octopuses, they, uh, they have a, such a strange DNA and they're so old. The oldest living octopus was da found dated eight, uh, 280 million years ago, which is outdates the dinosaurs by a qu couple million years. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. Crazy, its own thing. It's, it's really its own thing. So this is an, a creature older than the dinosaurs. How many did you say? Eight? Yes, eight, eight marble-sized balls. That, that's the request, guys. Yeah, for something that's lived around 280 million years, it's pretty fascinating. The fact that uh, they only live, like some species only live up to six months is the maximum lifespan. That's like as long as a hamster. And then the older living octopuses, like giant octopuses and stuff, only have a year, a life cycle about five years before they end up, a lot of the time it's their bodies break down in the, that amount of time. So they actually ends up being, I think it was that what they said was one month is like a year to an octopus or 15, 15 years for every year for a human. So if a human goes through a year, it's like 15 years in comparison to a lifespan for an octopus. So they really don't live that long, but they've survived way far longer than humans. So that's an interesting fact. And the reason they survived is because they're equipped with, with some uh, pretty incredible features, which we'll go through soon, some of those features. Whoa, Derek, looking good. What? <laughs> awesome, I'm gonna go off uh, off Taylor's uh, timing, okay? So once she's ready, I'm gonna move on to the next step. So hopefully you guys are keeping up. So yeah, eight marble-sized balls. If you wanna jump ahead, we're then gonna take, again, maybe a little bigger than a marble or so, and we are gonna press, after you make the ball, you're gonna press it flat, almost like we did with the turtles. We're gonna press it flat and make a disc. Work it and shape it slowly. Working. So one of those survival traits that octopuses end up having is all octopuses are venomous. Most octopuses' venom, though, cannot hurt or kill a human. But there is one type of octopus that looks good. So Taylor's just finished hers, and it looks like that. That works perfect. Yeah. So all octopuses are venomous. But there is, okay, sorry, there's one octopus that has enough venom to, if they were to venom, put any ve amount of venom into a human being, it'd take minutes to paralyze you. <gasps> and that octopus also contains enough venom if it wanted to release it to kill about 20 humans, but it never, it's never been recorded of it doing such a thing. So <laughs> hopefully there's not 20 humans under the sea that get bit by that octopus or venom, venom, venom I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not only do they have venom, but they spray ink. And that ink is made of the same stuff that makes our, gives us our skin color as humans. And when they spray an enemy in the eyes, it causes a blinding irritation. It scrambles an animal's senses, its smell, its taste, which is very important for things like sharks, which is a common predator to the octopus. So if it were to be sprayed, it, 
uh, a shark relies heavily on its sense of smell and its ability to taste the water to find its prey, and that, that gives the octopus a chance to get, escape uh, vicious prey. Yeah. Okay, so then we're gonna try to just gather up a nice chunk of kit clay, and we're gonna make a larger ball. This is gonna be about the size of the head. You can see this, this is a lot smaller here. You can remove some clay eventually uh, if necessary. Okay, I see there's some people still working. Um, is there any questions up to this point? Anybody? Tom has a question, Kaylee mm -hmm. has a question. Oh, Tom has a question. Okay, Kaylee, we're gonna get Tom first and I'll, let, I'll we'll be right with you, okay? So that, again, it's, uh, it's kind of your choice. Uh, this is the kind of octopus I'm trying to make. This is kind of like a giant octopus. There's octopuses that, are, well, we'll go into that later, but this, I made it a lot bigger than this one's head. You can see it's gonna serve as the head, but you can easily pinch off some extra. So a little bigger is better, uh, in my opinion, for this uh, top ball. Is that, is that like big enough or bigger? Uh, I would make it a little bigger than that. I'm probably about three times the size of that ball. If you have, you should have the clay there. Which brings me to a funny, uh, funny point. There's a lot of types of octopuses out there. And the average octopus, like the most common octopus of the sea, or successful, they only grow about a foot to three feet in length. And they only weigh about 22 pounds. They're pretty small creatures. But the large uh, Pacific giant octopus can grow as long as 16 feet and weigh 110 pounds but the largest one ever found was 30 feet and 600 pounds, which is the size of like a horse, <laughs> in weight at least. Oh, Kaylee, yes. What is your question, Kaylee? Okay, so our first step was to make was to make about marble size eight marble sized balls. And while we'll, we'll we're Kaylee's catching up, guys, uh, I'll continue with the uh, the smallest octopus. So there's a, a species of octopus that only grows an inch big. So it would it fit in like the the tip of your hand, like just the tip of your finger, is like the size of this octopus. And if, has anybody ever seen the Facebook emoji of a ghost? It looks like a pink Facebook emoji ghost. They're absolutely adorable. <laughs> and they're just tiny. I know, and also a lot of people say like, they're a very smart animal, but I think they're compared, like a lot of people compare them to the intelligence of a house cat. I'm sure they would have different type of intelligence than a house cat, but I guess their brain power, as far as like processing power and stuff, is like a house cat. Another cool survival feature of an octopus is they have no skeletal skeletal bones or any outside skeleton, no skeleton or bones in their body at all. The hardest object in their body is a beak that looks like a parrot's beak. And that beak is located, if you're looking at my screen, right in the middle of their arms. So this thing is technically a mouth. They also have taste receptors all along their whole tentacle. So anything they touch, they can taste. <laughs> which is kind of a, a scary thought. Like right now, me touching this, I could taste this clay if I was an octopus. Luckily, I'm a human, and I'm not tasting clay right now. <laughs> so, where was I going with that? Oh, sorry. Um, because they have no bones, you look at this big octopus, look at the, uh, the eye on the octopus. You see the size of that eye? It can squeeze into anything the size of its eye. So if you see a drain pipe or something and it can fit its eye into it, it will, it's able to squeeze its entire body through that opening, 
which is <laughs> pretty astonishing. Okay, sorry. We're moving on to our next step. I think Kaylee's caught up. Kaylee, the next step was to make a disc. So it's a flat disc. A flat disc. Yep. And then after that, you're gonna make a larger, a larger ball in comparison to the first ball. It's like something about that. Good to know. Okay. Then you're gonna take a, a different color from your skin color and you're gonna make tiny, tiny balls that will be the eyeballs and we'll put those aside as well. Now we're gonna go back to our eight, eight marble sized balls and we're gonna start to cone shape them again, just like our last project where we kind of cone shaped it. Is YouTube able to see this? So I'm gonna put on the paper, I'm gonna point, I'm gonna get the tip pointed and I'm gonna try to evenly Distribute it into something along the lines of this, a cone like that. Try to make them roughly the same size. I kind of want to redo that one. So the same length, sorry. Uh, they're all the same size. I just try to get them to be roughly the same length. If you want some, your octopus to be uh, even. So symmetrical, there we go, there's the word. Speaking of which, like we're talking about uh, elephant, te uh, elephant uh, <laughs> octopus tentacles right now. One of, uh, this is kind of a sadder fact about octopuses, but when octopuses are kept in captivity and they're not stimulated by a, a nice space, they'll get depressed and they will eat their own tentacles, which is kind of a sad thing, but yeah, that, that ends up happening if they end up getting bored with their environment or not happy with their life, I guess, I don't know. I'm just working at those, making them into cone shapes, best you can. Yeah, another thing that makes octopuses seem like a bit of like an alien would be the fact that they have blue blood. Their blood is blue. And the reason their blood is blue is because they have a, a copper-rich protein in their blood. Uh, and, uh, sorry, that copper-rich protein transports oxygen through their body and it, yeah, it creates their blood, uh, makes their blood blue. So there's, you heard the joke like a cow has four stomachs so it can stomach a lot. I'm sure you've heard something like that, right? Well, octopuses, they don't have four stomachs, but they really deal with breakups well and heartbreak because if they lose one heart, they got two others. They've got three hearts. And the job of these three hearts, one heart uh, is just like ours where it uh, brings blood and oxygen to the muscles in the body. And the other two hearts, hearts actually act as a, for their gills and siphoning the water and oxygen. So they have two hearts dedicated to breathing underwater. <clears throat> so even though an octopus guys, they live underwater, correct? Obviously, everybody knows that. Some of them don't, some of them will come out of the water. There's a type of octopus called a puddle hopper, and he'll wait for the tide to recede late at night, and then there'll be uh, holes filled with water and fish trapped in those holes that cannot return to the sea until the tide returns and uh, carries them back into the sea with the water. And they'll use that opportunity to crawl over the rocks and jump into holes with fish trapped in it and have an easy meal of that fish. That's a cool feature, on another cool feature for octopuses or that type of octopus. And yeah, even though it lives in the sea, octopuses have a hard time swimming. So it's very exhausting for an octopus to swim. So their preferred me method of getting around or crawling around in the water, even though they're in water, is crawling. So they'll just crawl along surfaces most of the time to get where they need to go.
rather than swimming. So the preferred method would be crawling, not swimming. Oh, Melissa has a question, it looks like. Okay, can you unmute Melissa? Can you ask a question? Too much clay? Yeah, I did in my bag. Just... Well, that's good. The more clay, the better. You can make a big octopus. Yeah, I'm rude. You're a witch. I'm just... <laughs> Travis, you are a Teamwork, Melissa. You know it. We're all about the teamwork. Yeah. A little stick. <laughs> okay, so... Everyone's still working on their cones. Yes, looks like everybody's still at it. Awesome. So back onto the topic of a, an octopus's ink. An octopus sprays ink, obviously, for defense to get away, as I explained. But if an octopus doesn't get away from its own ink, it can kill itself in its own ink cloud. So that's very potent. Just, it's kind of a funny feature right there. You can release it and also kill yourself with it. So, uh, uh, I'll wait, I'll wait just a bit. Okay, so. Okay guys, so our next step, we got our flat disc, correct? You're gonna take each one of your cones. So you got your cone oh, that you Tom just made. Again. Oh, okay, I'll answer Tom's question before I continue. Use the table, Tom. So you see my screen here? Once you have the ball, uh, just use the table to kind of roll a point and then from that point just gradually let allow it to be thicker until you get anything like somewhere along those lines. And is that is that too thin? That's good, eh? That should be fine, yeah. Oh, okay. If I showed you that little ghost octopus, maybe I can bring up a picture really quick here while you guys are getting caught up, just to show you how funny. If your octopus ends up looking like this, that's fine, because they can look like this. Uh, you'll be I think you're gonna laugh. So I brought up a picture of my phone. That is the octopus that's the tiny little inch octopus that I was talking about. And look at his little tentacles, Tom. Yeah. See, they don't all have long tentacles. If you want to make a little shorter tentacle, some of them have short. <laughs> <laughs> right, it looks like a little emoji ghost. Yeah. <laughs> it's cute. Yeah, it's kind of kind of freaky. If you think about like if an octopus were to grab you with its tentacles, would you already be in its mouth? Because it can taste with its hands, and you're also like it's also its mouth is at the end. So once it grabs you, <laughs> you're pretty much getting fed into its mouth. Luckily, I don't think it eat a human, but yeah, it's kind of like arms and mouth combined into one one creature. Like <laughs> it's an exterior mouth. Like, if my mouth got reversed into a creature, it'd be an octopus. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to push the ends down flat a little bit on my tentacles. So they look like, like that, almost like a cobra's hood. Make sure it looks like a cobra's hood a little bit, because when, they're, when their tentacles come together around their, uh, around their body, it is a little bit webbed. And they, they bring up their body to, to swim or use that.
Yeah, so octopuses can also change their color, as I've told you, or I'm sure you know, to mimic any environment they're in, just about any environment they're in. They can also change the shape of their body to mimic objects. So if they see the shape of an object, they can very quickly turn their body into that, pretty much exactly that shape and sit beside it just to make themselves look even more camouflaged. So that's like a step up even above uh, your typical iguana. Is it a, not iguana? Uh, chameleon. There we go. Okay, once you push those flat, we're going to go around our disc and we're going to put our legs. Just pressing them. Easiest way I would do is just put them across from each other. Then put it again across from each other. And the last four, exact same thing. So it looks like like a, a four-way star. Again, across from each other. If you're overlapping a little bit on the other legs, that's okay. It's not an issue. It'll work it in nice right there. So it's gonna look like something like this at this point. Once you press those legs on. Any questions? If you're waiting, I'm going to start working the clay into the arms a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's the way, Tom. Just work the legs in. Perfect. Looking good. Wow, good job, Taylor. It's a big octopus. Mm -hmm. Well, they can grow as big as 30 feet, so... I feel like I'd be a little bit intimidated if I seen a 30 foot octopus. Yeah, so octopuses have a short lifespan, as I said earlier, but like a, a female octopus will lay hundreds of thousands of eggs at a time. Hundreds of thousands of offspring at a time. And the, the mother's maternal instinct is so strong with her, her offspring that once the babies hatch, she will stay with those babies the entire time. She will not eat, she will not do anything. She will care for those babies like I said, that, that amount of time, a couple of weeks is quite a few years in <clears throat> octopus terms. Those babies are fully developed in those two weeks. The mother usually does not make it though. The mother will pass on keeping care of her babies because that is her instinct to, and love for her, her children or her offspring. She sacrifices herself for the hundreds of thousands to come. And that's, uh, ex that's uh, contribute to the success of this creature's survival for 20, 280 million years. So. That's pretty cool. Sadly, the males also don't make it when they have, have young, but maybe, well, okay, yeah. So when a male uh, produces offspring with a female with octopuses, I guess it'll go release a protein which causes a state of dementia in the male. The male will then swim off into the open ocean and becomes an easy target for uh, prey. So often the male does not make uh, its offspring as well. So usually when they make babies, neither of the parents survive very long in the octopus world. It's a, a life-giving experience. Okay, looks like everybody's still working. Awesome. Okay, with our larger ball, we're gonna start shaping our head. Octopuses have all sorts of heads. I made the blue one very alien-like because that's kind of like where, I think that's where they kind of get that alien head is actually from octopuses. They copied the octopus's head, put a helmet around it, put it, gave it a human body and there's your alien, you know? So we're gonna make it kind of like an alien head because that's pretty much how an octopus's head looks like. You can make it a ball 
just plop it on top if you want. As you saw, that baby one is very rounded head. Not all it's, octopuses have the it's same. Almost like a light bulb shape. Yeah, or like a, even a human head, like make it very oval, point at the bottom. Start shaping it from there. Or like a light bulb, yeah. Sean's right. It's like almost like a pointy, elongated light bulb. So just kind of work that in your hands. Get the shape that you want. Once you get the shape that you want, you can attach it and keep working at it. Just keep shaping your octopus. We've got about 38 seconds. We're going to speed this along a little bit. coming a little bit short on time here so we're, I'm gonna speed the final steps along here so now I'm gonna squeeze around the base kind of giving that elongated like neck like structure that it has I'm gonna elongate the skull a bit and I'm gonna bend it back because the skull elongates back a lot of the time just like on those alien shows then I'm gonna grab a toothpick or just or whatever device. Oh, hold on to your toothpicks because there's gonna be a time when we will still need those. Now I'm gonna poke holes with a pencil, toothpick, whatever you have on the side of its head. I'm gonna take those two eyeballs that I made earlier, I'll plop them on in, give them some nice green eyes here. And then I'm gonna sing you a little song because huh, that's, that's all the time I got is to sing an octopus's garden. I want to be ooh, under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. He'd let us in. Do, do, know where we've been <laughs> in an octopus's oh, garden goodness. in the shade. Okay. Well, yes, Tom. My oh, I thought you were going to tell me to shut up and stop singing. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah. That's looking good. Yeah. yeah. That's the yeah, legs looking good. Ooh, Allie, yours looks great. <laughs> oh, Mel, yours looks awesome too. Ooh, that's cute. Nice. Good job, guys. These turned out great. Tony, I like yours too. Wowzer. Great. I love it, Al. Love I it, love Mel. the different colors on those too. Those are really great. nice. How colorful they are. It's part of the uh -oh, fun. here. Look at Mel's. It's coming for us. <laughs> if you guys want to take it a step further, we're going to run out of time here. But as you can see on this one, I put little, I made little circles. I added the dots. I, I tried to make a beak because that's where the mouth is. So if you guys want to do that, you can go in the, the back here. And you, I poked a, again with the pencil and I opened it up. I added some color to it to make it look like a beak, even though it's going to get mashed. And yeah. So I hope you enjoyed our job, octopus yeah. craft. That if there's any questions, I'll, I'll answer some more now. So I'm gonna mute all of them. Just raise your hand if you have any questions. Or, or unmute, yeah, that works too. And before I quit, I got one more fact for you about octopuses. Octopuses have suction cups on their hands, correct? Everybody knows that? Those, those suction cups on their hands can hold 35 pounds for each suction cup. And they have 240 suction cups on average per arm. And that will be the final, final fact there, guys. Okay.